Hello everyone and welcome to Roll for Puns, Danganronpa Session 6. Nick, take it away. All right. Hello everybody. Thanks for joining us for Session 6 of our Danganronpa series. Uh, real quick, we are still missing Denzel. Hopefully he comes back to us soon like a lover astray. Uh, no more news on that, however. And also, Sean, um, something really important came up, so he'll either be here later, be here soon, or not be here at all. We're not quite sure at the moment. Um, but that's fine. We'll we'll survive. Your DM is completely, completely prepared. Ha ha ha. Nervous giggle. Uh, anyway, nothing too important happened last session. Um, right, there's only <laughs> there's only three of you. Uh, um, you better roll I don't that think D4. You've, <laughs> I don't think you've ever done recap, David. <laughs> I don't see no dice rolling. Sure. So uh, last time there was a trial. We learned a lot about who did the murder and some some very dark secrets. Ian's in danger. Ian's danger. Ian's in, Ian a in lot danger. Of danger. Um, or is everybody else gets close to him in danger? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in danger. You're in danger. So uh, my character, I did not want to believe the person that actually caused the murder. Poor Grace. She didn't deserve it. She didn't deserve to go through that, all of that. But she was a, a uh, somebody that really wanted all the attention on herself. And uh, caused everything to uh, not go down very well. So she's now dead, which we did not expect. Well, we did, but we did yeah, characters probably not. <laughs> we did, but we didn't. And uh, now we have to suffer through uh, that tragedy while uh, Ian is uh, dealing with his own tragedy as we learn that Juliet is the uh, ultimate yandere and uh, he just rejected her. I didn't reject her. I just said no. <laughs> That's called rejecting. <laughs> Hot, I said hot dog, no taco. <laughs> yeah, that, that's almost even worse than rejecting. Oh, God. <laughs> Ian was out here like, our, our interests do not align. Oh, God. All right. Um, yeah, so nothing nothing too important happened last session. It was a real snooze fest. Nothing too important. <laughs> nothing too important. <laughs> Just, you know, the fact that, oh, we're all still in danger. The place could still sink you down into the depths of the fucking ocean. And there is a submarine that can uh, get us out, but there's only, like, what, one seat? Uh, wasn't told how many seats, but it could be as low as one. We were basically told only one of us was getting out of here. So that's fun. His sub's fun. probably in the same place that you know he, where he's printing the money. <laughs> Ian, we got to get to that fifth floor. <laughs> that, the fifth floor of the admin the dorms or the I forgot what I even called it anymore administration building whatever in the center district. Jokes on you! I have a boat. <laughs> Does the boat help Love you boat. bring up to the surface? I thought he said a rope. I said boat. Well, this is how this session's gonna go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, with all of that out of the way, I would officially like to welcome everyone to Chapter Two. If you guys think you've been through the ringer already, oh boy, do I have bad news for you. Uh, with that in mind, the killing has started, so expect our list of actors here, so to speak, to uh, start diminishing. So, with uh, that out of the way, allow me to welcome you all, players and audience, officially to Chapter Two. The title of this chapter is With Love. And uh, as I said in the in the chat before game, Godspeed, Ian. So, so I, I just have to ask, was the chapter title known before last session or did you decide after Ian's fuck up? A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> well, Ian's dead. It was I probably going to have a similar, uh, similar, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Taste? I, I, don't, I don't know the word. Uh, it it might have had some influence, yes. Similar story arc? Yeah, basically. 
All right. So moving on, uh, Ian, it's already obvious that you are currently in danger. I said it last session. Um, up, buddy. <laughs> for everyone, though, the gloves are going to begin to come off. It's no secret, as Juliet's talent was dropped last session, that she is perhaps best currently described as unhinged. Therefore, it would be wise for all of you to ponder what effect this could ultimately have on you. So consider this a blanket warning. Um, with that um, done and done, we can pick up more or less where we left off. I believe everyone had pretty much gone to bed. Uh, Bud, he got dragged into the dormitory hallway. So it's actually pretty easy if he, you know, does show up late or or not at all. I don't really have to change anything, which I, I personally found kind of funny. I was chuckling at that. Um, you were all told that you were going to be allowed to sleep in and that there would be no morning announcement due to how late the trial ran. With that being said, Ian, let's start with you. Um, I forgot exactly the circumstances as to your uh, your sleep. You were in the bag. We and were you... sleeping together in the bag, yes. In the bag. All right. So you and Howitzer sleeping in the bag. Um, about what time do you think you'd wake up? And um, as you wake up, do you have, I guess, any plans that you're going to think about doing? Um, wait, wasn't David also in the bag or am I remembering? That? Uh, David he... was, but he left after I called it Knapsack Fontardis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he left and I believe went back to his own room. Yep. Yes. Okay. All right, but I guess what time do you think you'd wake up? Again, there's not going to be any morning announcement. You guys got told that you were going to be allowed to sleep in. Um, Probably about nine-ish hours after falling asleep. You're going to make me do math, aren't you? Yes. Poor DM remember, doesn't even... I don't remember. I don't remember either, asleep. Ian. <laughs> noon. Let's say noon. <laughs> noon. I was about to say, didn't, didn't we say it was probably like around, I don't know, five, six, seven, the trial ended, something like that? I don't remember exactly. Well, it was between midnight and 4 a.m. that the body was found, and then there was investigation time. So it was like the crack of dawn that everything ended yeah. in going to bed. Yeah, so it would have been like seven-ish morning when we went to bed. Yeah. All right, so you said you're going to wake up. Are you sure noon or later? Eh, screw it. Noon-ish. Noon-ish. Noon -ish. So that's about, what, four or four hours of sleep? Five? Five. Your, your, your DM can't math. <laughs> okay, um, as you wake up, you would notice Howitzer is still sleeping, and you two are okay. currently in your bag. Okay. Nick, you're going to hate me for this. Oh, boy. <laughs> for flavor, mm -hmm. I would like to look at him and pose in the picture you have received. <laughs> I'm trying to forget that exists. Okay, you pose. He's, uh, he, he's still sleeping, so uh, I'm not sure if you're planning on staying in your bag or getting up and getting breakfast. Oh, I'm waiting for him to wake up. You might be waiting a while. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll say um, probably an hour. He after that, he probably stirs awake. He, uh, he he sees you posing. He's he's very confused. Oh, hey. I uh, I thought uh, I thought I wasn't uh, dreaming. Uh, apparently, I'm still dreaming. This is just like the dream I had. You don't have a laser gun anywhere, do you? I don't call it that anymore. Oh, God. All right. Um, <clears throat> nice backpack. Uh, nice, nice bag. Nice sack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some breakfast. <laughs> Sean, you have the best timing. I'm glad. What did I miss? <laughs> I'll let Ian explain because he's the one that's doing it. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so. I'm breathing. Calm down. <laughs> he's trying, Alex. Leave him alone. <laughs> okay, so. So. Hang on, I gotta wipe the tears out of my eyes. Okay, so Sean 
Howitzer and I just woke up around... Well, I woke up around noonish. Howitzer woke up about an hour later. He woke up and looked at me as I'm laid out, draw me one of your French girls style. He asked if I had a laser gun anywhere, and I said, I don't call it that anymore. All right. He said, basically, I'm going to go get some breakfast. <laughs> nice bag, nice sack. I'm going to get going. And then you immediately popped in. I see. <laughs> oh, that was great. Oh. That was that was perfect timing. All right. Welcome, Sean. Um, okay. As Howitzer gets up, I would like to say I have a gift for him. Okay. Um, um, what are you giving him? Hold up. Let me pull this up. His... Oh, God damn it. Where to go? I'm already worried. Uh, Sean, you really didn't miss anything. All we've really did, all we really did, was uh, recap. Okay. I will give him the heavy leather belt with the buckle that says "Daddy" on it. He approves and immediately puts it on. Mm, just how I like him. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'm uh, I'm gonna go get some breakfast. You uh, you can. Stay in my room. I uh, look around, do whatever. I don't, I don't really care. I'm going to cook uh, some breakfast. You're going to what? I'm going to go cook some breakfast. You're going to cook some breakfast? Yep. All right. He's going to start getting ready. Do you leave like immediately or? I put on pants. Yes. All right. <laughs> Pre preferable, I guess. Um, so you'd probably be leaving before him then because he's going to like do his whole morning routine. Yeah, I'll let him out of the bag first. Okay, so he starts getting ready. Um, you put on pants. Those two, yeah. yes. I get dressed, Nick. All right, and I'm assuming... I'm not then an you... animal. I'm assuming then you start leaving? Yes. Okay. Um, real thing, one thing real quick, I got, I got distracted. Um, this is going to pertain to everybody. So as you wake up, Ian, you would have found a bag with 100 mono coins, um, pretty much just laying on top of you. Um, or actually since with what we talked about, it can be outside your backpack. That's fine. Right. Um, also you would have realized that there was a periodic soft beeping coming from your mono pad inspecting it. You find two things, a list of the mono shops inventory with the words grand opening and a list of rules. And you guys should already have been able to see those. Those are actually in the public notes section, um, on the side. If you go to notes, it's one of the, it's their public. So you guys can actually look at them. Um, I did forget to mention that. As uh, as you go to leave, you exit Howitzer's room, and you find that there's someone waiting for you. Uh, someone that you don't usually talk to, actually. You see Marionette sort of leaning by the door. And as she sees you, she says, I've uh, been waiting for you. I wanted to talk to you real quick. Okay. In private or out here? Uh, preferably in private, in my room, if that's okay. Eh, all right. As you begin start uh, starting to walk to her room, she will begin talking. I've noticed you're having some lady problems. I believe I may be in a position to not only help you, but uh, to make all your problems disappear. You see, the key to dealing with Juliet is to pass her along like a game of hot potato. And I know just who to pass her to. I love hot potato. That's one of my favorite games. I, uh... I'll go into more detail as we get into my room, but I do so hope you'll accept my uh, kind offer. I'd hate to think of what could happen to you or how it's there otherwise. Mm, all right. All right, so you're following her into her room? Yeah. All right, you get to her room. It's at the end of the hallway. She opens the door. She walks in. She sort of stands off to, uh, stands off to the side, and she sort of outstretches her arm um, to sort of, like, welcome you in. Yep. I will walk in and look into the around as I go in there. All right. As you go in, you can't really see anything. Um, with that being said, I guess, where are you looking and what are you looking for? I am just looking around to see if there's a um, Juliet waiting to murder me. Well, about that, you don't see her in time. Go ahead and roll me five D100s and take the lowest. Oh, I... As you walk in, uh, Marionette's body was sort of blocking your view. Ooh. 
Oh, right. So 12. Yeah. And uh, one, two, three, four, five. You go unconscious. We'll get back to you later. <laughs> David, about what time do you think you'd wake up? And do you have any plans today? <laughs> um. Well, let's see. We went to bed around seven. Uh, uh, you know, about 11. About 11, even earlier. All right. Um, I suppose, what are your plans for today? Also, you find your money, and just so everybody knows, I already added it to your inventory. Um, I think I pretty much said that. Um, honestly, probably gonna head down, get some lunch, and then just kind of see who's out and about and see how everyone's doing, you know, after the traumatic experience of that this morning. All right, you get ready. Um, you begin heading downstairs. You go to the banquet hall. Are you sort of cooking your own food? And I guess, um, do you have anything in mind that you're making? Um, if there's no one down there to cook, I'll cook myself, and I'm going to be making, uh, you know, waffles. Waffles. The best food. And bacon. But not just any All right. waffles. Chocolate chip waffles. <laughs> all right so you uh you make your food you want to you want to roll for cooking <clears throat> oh i guess i can do that <clears throat> you know i'm i'm sleep deprived it's fine um... <laughs> dave you... you're supposed to argue that you're a good host because you're a dungeon master listen we all know the best dungeon masters buy just chips and cookies <laughs> that's not true <laughs> You uh you you make some chocolate chip waffles, but you forget the chocolate chips, so Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I feel like justice was served. <laughs> Alright, as you sit down, uh someone sits next to you, someone that you're not actually used to talking to. In fact, really nobody is. And uh, it's Robin, actually. I don't think you guys have actually really said two words to each other. No, I don't think many people have spoken to Robin. <laughs> Besides the two of you, the banquet hall at this time is pretty much empty. Um, you both actually woke up extremely early for how late you went to bed. So, As he sits down, he uh, kind of starts to nervously try and talk to you. Um, he has a sort of hard time speaking up. I was just wondering, uh, and his, his hands are kind of shaking as he's, uh, as he's talking. He has some social anxiety. If I could uh, ask you a favor... What's the favor? Well, it's it's just that I've noticed you seem to have uh, this certain way with the ladies. I've heard uh, I've heard whispers of what they call you in secret, the dungeon master. So, uh, um, he sort of slams the table a little bit. Please, can you help me make Juliet fall in love with me? Please. Look. Look. I just had to hear that happen twice because I can hear it from Jesse's It was it phone. was better the second time. I... Uh, he continues, "Look, let's be honest. I'm not killing anyone. So, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die a man. I mean this in absolutely the worst way possible, but that saucy vixen can bake me into a cake and eat me or whatever her deal is." I finish so, uh, chewing my waffle, and I look at him. It takes a lot of guts to come out and say that. All right. Yeah. I think I can help you. First, we'll have to work on your charisma and your confidence. You'll help me? Yes. Oh, thank God. My brother always said the key to everything is a well-thought-out five-step plan mixed with alcohol. So step one, therefore, is getting alcohol. And who better to get alcohol from than the ultimate alcoholic? And that'll help my confidence and charisma. I'm pretty sure I saw him passed out in the hallway. Step two is to come up with the last three steps. So drinking age here, 18 or 21? 18, right? I don't, my, I don't have my ID on me, though. Hope that drunk bastard doesn't card me. You know, how about we hold off on the alcohol until we figure out those other steps? Work on All your right. non-alcoholic confidence first. Because then the alcohol will just make it better. 
All right, I see. I see. I like where this is going. He starts taking notes. Oh, um, I should have mentioned this probably before, but I'm willing to, uh, uh, I'd hate the thought of you doing this, you know, helping me out for free. I'll pay you both in mono coins and, uh, a little bit of secret. Well, a little secret, sorry. Uh, I'm nervous. I, I, I'm also really intrigued by your waffles. <laughs> I can make some for you. I might be interested, but... <laughs> No, no, later. Got to focus on the five-step plan. Anyways, I'm willing to pay you all of the mono coins I have, and uh, I also have something else you might like. Earlier today, um, as I was sort of roaming the hallway, I, uh, I happened to pass by Grace's room, and I sort of stopped, and absentmindedly I said out loud, I wonder what's going to happen to her room. And... Uh, well, Monokuma said something kind of interesting to me. He sort of popped out of nowhere. And, uh, oh, shit. As I attempt to open Discord and then immediately close it. I'm going to uh, take about 30, 45 seconds and actually type you out the rest uh, in, your, in your DMs, David. Okay. Okay, dokie. Uh -huh. Let's see. Gotta so, Ian. Down to find Nick. Yes. How dead are you? Panic. Panic. With the K. All right, so that's what uh, that's what he says to you. I'm listening. All right, that's that's his reply after that. All right. Okay. Well. I think for that information, uh, we can go into a special les lesson. You know what girls like? Role no, play. if I did, I'd... Wait, what? Role play. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> of course, it's so obvious. Because sometimes the best way to talk to a woman is to not think of you as yourself. All those years I spent on that World of Warcraft server are going to come in handy. Oh, we're going to get along. <laughs> I was ready to adopt that boy. <laughs> you were ready to adopt that boy? Until he started. <laughs> All right, we're going to leave this here for now. <laughs> Let's find out what Bud Bailey's going to get up to today. Bud, you find yourself passed out in the hallway uh, with a bag of monocoins placed on your lap. You're not quite sure how they got there. Um, I guess what time would you wake up? Uh, let's see. I, um, drank myself to sleep around sunrise. So, yeah. So, ten hours after that? Ten hours, so around five? Yeah, that sounds right. All right, well, uh, just for, uh, for context, um... <laughs> I don't know if this will come into play because you're waking up so late. <laughs> the, that bag of mana coins might not even be there by the time you wake up. There's a bag of mana coins placed on your lap. You're not quite sure how they got there. Uh, I've already added those to your inventory. Also, your mono pad is softly say good luck to beeping. anybody who tries to take that from me, even while <laughs> That's I'm fair passed too. out. Uh, your mono pad softly beeping. Also, there's a piece of paper in one of your hands that seems to have been signed by Marionette, but you're not awake to read it, so, you know. And uh, your monopad will also have a special mesh. Your DM can't talk. It's already been 30 minutes uh, done talking for the rest of the session. Um, your uh, monopad will also have an additional little message. But, you know, you're you're currently sleeping, it sounds like. So, dude, I, I, I unfortunately drank myself into. I know <laughs> that's the drank. earliest I assume I could wake up. That's fair. Uh, real quick, then, we're going to head over to Allison. What time do you wake up, and what are your plans for today? I'm going to roll a d10 to figure out how many hours I sleep. That's fair. Also, you're going to wake up with a monster headache. Uh, hey, look, the normal amount. So I woke up with a monster headache? Uh, yep. Do I have ibuprofen? Uh, probably not, no. <laughs> I'm staying in my room. <laughs> You're staying in your room. Yeah, if I have a monster headache, and especially after what just happened. 
can't believe you guys are going to make me do like kindergarten math that I can't do. So <laughs> went to bed at seven, eight, nine, three. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We'll call it three. All right. Um, since you and Bud are waking up a little later, we are going to. Uh, Ian's a little preoccupied at the moment. We'll get back to that later. <laughs> so just for clarification, uh, never uh, never trust Marionette. So when she had stepped off to the side and outstretched her arm, uh, someone was hiding behind her getting ready to gank you with some chloroform that uh, her and Marionette may have bought in at a certain uh, unreasonable early hour. Doesn't chloroform take like 10 minutes to work? No, it should be instantaneous as soon as you shove the rag over someone's face. I was afraid to Google it, I'm going to be honest, because I don't need the uh, FBI, like... It's movie chloroform. Yeah, it's movie chloroform. It's mono mono chloroform. <laughs> okay. Works instantaneously. There's just a large amount of very highly concentrated chloroform. <laughs> So, I guess, let's swing Wait. back. Go ahead. Um, I'm just going to text this to you. All right, I love it when when, uh, when I get text, texty messages. Uh, this session's already going to be interesting. I had no idea chloroform takes 10 minutes to work. I thought that was, like, instantaneous to all the movies have taught me. No. Like I said, I was too afraid to, uh... Um, alright, I guess what did you have in mind? Because it would have been pretty instantaneous, but there is also some logical merit to your, uh, to your argument there. But keep in mind that, uh, this is kind of her talent, and she does this for a living. Okay. Uh, you can attempt, but whatever stuff was, uh, up in your face has made you pretty disoriented. Uh, you know what? Screw it. it. I feel this better than the alternative. What do I roll? Um, well, let's see. You are going to attempt to, uh, so we're going to head back a little. Ian wants a chance to fight back, uh, against the ultimate yandere. I know this um, is a dumb idea. I'm specifying so, that. Yeah, so we'll say um so as soon as you stepped in she uh you felt a hand come over you from behind there was a rag over your face um we'll say you could have elbowed her back a little bit and turned to face her you'd kind of be messed up because whatever was over that rag is uh pretty fast acting i guess it's not actual chloroform but i'll figure that out later um so if you want a hand-to-hand -hand combat go ahead and roll i'd say even though it's not your talent you would still have some training so i'd say you get two dice so you can go ahead and roll two dice. We'll take away... I, I'd say three dice, but you can roll two dice for being uh, kind of fucked up, I guess. Yes. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, I'm done. <laughs> 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 All right. It, it doesn't go well. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, she is kind of the ultimate yandere, so this is kind of her thing. So she, uh, she wins. <laughs> yep. Understandable. All right, so yeah, you do block out, uh, black out, and um, we uh, we will get back to you later. But yeah, there there was definitely some weight to your uh, your argument there, uh, with your background and such. Um, David, you have a plan for uh, getting Robin and Juliet together. He's trying to come up with a five point plan. You guys have just finished breakfast. So step one, get into a character. Step. Two, gifts. What I have learned so far from my own interactions and from watching Ian, Juliet loves gifts. She treasures them. Right. That, uh, that's excellent. I should be anybody but myself, and we should run to the store. I saw the mono shop has a new inventory. Yeah, that might help, depending on what they have. <clears throat> what, uh, what do you think I should get her? Well, based think, on think what she... she, what her talent is. Got it, Trank Rifle. I maybe <laughs> wouldn't go that far. 
Blackout pills? She'd probably enjoy them, and that's better than the Trank Rifle. Maybe. <laughs> okay, hear me out. This is a crazy idea, but I see there's a coupon for a free tip from Monokuma. What if we can also get Monokuma to help me get get together with Juliet? That's not a terrible idea. Do you think it works that way? Only one way to find out. <laughs> that's going to take all of my money. That is a choice you are you will have to make. I'm here giving you advice. Uh, Gifts are a great way to a woman's heart. Um, in most cases, I would I would suggest food, cheese, but uh, I don't know. Juliet's a little special. Yeah, she is. All yeah. right, let's head down to the store. Right. Remember, keep thinking you are not yourself. You are a confident young man. I'll be anybody except me. All right. <laughs> and I'm assuming you two head to the store. Yep. I am fully in a character based on trying to help him. <laughs> okay. Um, but <laughs> we're going to skip through again, bud. You're still sleeping. Uh, Allison will say you probably wake up by now as, um, everybody else is starting to stir as well. All Are right. you, uh, still planning on, uh, hiding in your room? Uh, was there anything else you well, wanted to do? I'm probably going to venture out, try and find some food and maybe something to deal with the headache. Okay. Um, so you head down to the uh, the banquet hall then? Yeah. All right, as you're down there, you see a, there's a lot more people um, than when David was down there. Um, you see Fantasia, Crash, etc. Um, I guess, what are you uh, planning on cooking or getting for food? What are my options for not cooking? Like, what food options are there? For not cooking? Uh, there's an assortment of fruits and vegetables, so bananas, apples... I will grab an assortment of fruit. Okay. And then go hang out with Fantasia and cry. All right. They uh they see you, they they nod, they wave you over, you sit down, you begin eating. Fantasia's chewing bubblegum and uh not eating anything else. She looks like she probably had just finished. Crash is in the middle of what looks to be a massive plate of bacon and literally nothing else. Do you eat anything else other than the bacon? I had some ham earlier. <laughs> I... No. <laughs> Excuse me, but this is the breakfast of a winner. You know what? Uh, sure. Sure. Look, I just found out that I don't have to pay my tickets. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Like I said, breakfast of winners right here. You certainly won in cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Winning in cholesterol. Yeah, I don't think I have to pay these tickets with the mono police dealt with, so... Uh... Also, I just uh, came into some money, so, you know, got big plans for today. Oh, you did too? Yeah. Hmm. Seems I wasn't the only one. No. I was kind of wondering where it came from, but if you got it too, we probably all got some. Seems like it. How'd you like to, uh... How'd you like to take that money and, uh... Sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe gamble a little bit? How about, uh, how about you and I head to the racetrack? I have got the biggest headache known to mankind today, so that's gonna be a no for me. <laughs> Fine, I understand, you know. I am the ultimate race car driver, so yeah, you'd probably lose anyway. You know, no. not like... Not like the first time we raced where, uh, you know, it's the, the you, you let me win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Well, you, you could try and convince, you know, Howitzer to go with you. That's a good idea, actually. Well, <laughs> is Howitzer in the uh, dining hall? Um, 
Let's see. He would have woken up early. Probably he had just finished eating and probably went out. Um, you might have caught him coming down, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. He probably would have had a massive plate of eggs. No, I was just wondering if they are considering eating him up. Come you on. probably would have seen him leaving to explore, probably down to the shop, you could assume. Uh, but he's not currently there, no. Did you guys see the shop? Uh, I haven't been down. I saw the message, and Fantasia will tell you basically the same thing. Uh, she saw the message, but she hasn't left to uh, actually go look at anything yet. Why do they sell... Do you think that medical supplies is ibuprofen? Uh, Fantasia will speak up. I suppose it's possible. They should have an assortment of moderate painkillers. I'm going to the motto shop. All right. That... <laughs> All right. So you're going to finish uh, breakfast slash lunch and start heading to the mono shop. Yeah. All With right. We're going to one of them in tow if they want to come. Uh, They'd probably both tag along, um, sort of uh, set out to see it as a group, I guess. Uh, With that, we're going to head over to Bud. Um, You uh, begin to stir awake. Um, uh, what do I find when I wake up? So there's a uh, a bag of mono coins. It's already been added to your inventory. There's a hundred. Uh, your mono pad is softly beeping. Um, clicking on it, you'll see that it shows you the mono shop is having a grand opening, and you'll see its inventory. You'll see something called Monokuma's house rules, and you'll also see something else that I will message you real quick in Discord. Okay. Okay, that'd be so much easier if I was actually competent at typing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll head there then. All right, and you also notice there's a piece of paper in your hands, and it's signed by Marionette. I, I would have read that first because All paper right, it, is a little bit more noticeable. Yeah, it just reads, take the day off, puppet. I have plans. Not ominous at all. <laughs> All right, so do you grab anything to eat real quick, or do you just pretty much head straight no, to the I'm going to head uh, straight store? there. All right, one second. I've, my, my throat is killing me. I need water. Okay. Let's hop back over to uh, Ian. You've gotten yourself into a mess. You tried fighting Juliet. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So... Let me just... I have to keep, like, scrolling back and forth through my fucking notes here. Uh, da 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 You don't have to worry until he pulls me in into a tri private chat, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I told you today's session was uh, going to be interesting, so... Uh... Oh, no. I have so many notes in the same spot in one minute. All right, 30-second delay. My heart is right, beating so... uncomfortably fast right now. <laughs> heart is beating uncomfortably fast. I'm trying to do what I can, Ian. He's it's... definitely trying. It's fair. It's fair. All right, this is I unprofessional, but I gotta. Uh, I gotta actually read through my notes here. I'm almost there. There's David's spot, and there's Bud's spot. There's Allison's stuff. Almost there. I have a lot of notes. Normally what I do is I separate these, but this time I was like, nah, fuck it. I'm going to write them all in the exact same list. All right, I found your stuff. All right, so uh, we're going to check back on you, Ian. Have you uh, had enough time to uh, meditate and decide, um, I guess, how you're going to proceed with the situation you found yourself in? Have you weighed the scales, peered beyond the veil? I am playing this by ear. All right, well... I'm assuming that... I'm waking up tied to a chair. It's funny because, yeah, that's pretty much on point. So eventually, uh, the sweet, <sighs> sweet smell of cinnamon rolls baking rouses you from your slumber, and you hear a familiar voice as you stir. It's Juliet's voice as she says, Well, 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 look who's come crawling back. As you attempt to move, 
you suddenly come to a few worrying realizations. Not only are you strapped tightly to a chair with a series of leather belts, you are also only wearing your underwear, with your trench coat and bag set off to the side. You also notice Marionette standing off at a distance with her arms crossed. Looking around, you'll see trays upon trays upon trays of beautifully glazed hot cinnamon rolls. A familiar ding suddenly pierces through the air. It's the not-so-easy bake oven you gave Juliet as a gift not too long ago. Juliet oh. suddenly becomes animated and grabs, barehanded, mind you, another tray of cinnamon rolls and places them onto her bed, which is nearly covered in trays. Marionette will speak up. I'm glad you finally decided to join us. Good morning. Zip. How, uh, how are you feeling? Uh, uh. You know, you and I have not really had a chance to talk until now. Yeah, you usually get uh, I just want you to know that you don't have to be afraid, Ian. I've told her everything. How you and David are both in love with her, but too afraid of damaging your friendship to make a move. So both of you attempted to be the better man. <laughs> better man and break things off. That We're going to fix that her. today, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she started raising her voice. Uh, so both of you attempted to be the better man and break things off. We're going to fix that today. Marionette slowly walks behind you, Ian, and sort of wraps her arms around you almost, dangling a string of paper puppets in front of your face as she whispers in your ear, By the time I'm done here, there's going to be two trials and five dead bodies. Oh, but you don't have time to worry about that, I'm afraid. After all, you have a wedding coming up. Ooh, is it Howitzer? Oh, you poor fool. Did I ever tell you I'm a wedding planner? It's my second talent, you see. I see you're dumbstruck. I know. It's uh, it's surprising. I don't look like I would enjoy planning weddings, and normally I don't unless, you know, the outcome is a lot of people dying and, you know, saving myself and those close to me. Yeah. Saving bud, then? Oh, you're going to look really cute in a tux. I'm almost jealous. I have military dress blues I might look better in. At this point, um, Juliet's focusing on cooking, but she is sort of humming and singing. And uh, what she's singing is, Wedding bells, wedding bells, stab him in the back. Break his legs, break his legs, and he'll come crawling back. <laughs> well then. And uh, a marionette sort of stares over at Juliet and gives an almost disgusted sort of face. Well, Ian, Juliet, I hate to leave you two uh, newlyweds here, but I'm headed off to the store to pick something, uh, something up, some wedding supplies. Though I think I'm actually... She starts patting around her clothes. Yeah, I'm actually going to be 15 monocoins short. Hmm... Uh, by this time, also, Ian, you would notice that your trench coat clothes and your bag are set off to the side. And mm -hmm. she'll begin rummaging through your things, trying to find your mono coins. I guess, where do, would you normally keep those? If I saw her rummaging through my stuff while she said she was low on coins, I'd say they're in the bottom right inside pocket of the jacket. Oh, I don't trust you. You keep everything in this backpack, don't you? Eh, only the good stuff. Coins aren't good stuff. That's fine. I'll either find coins or something to sell. And uh, she starts pulling random shit out of your backpack. Which means I get to use this table. Well, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna come in handy, never. She uh, pulls something else out. I'm actually just impressed you managed to fit this. It comes in handy. She pulls something else out. <laughs> really? A rock. It looks cool. I can't sell it. Oh, that's useless. She throws that over her shoulder. Uh-huh. <laughs> Accidents happen. That they do. Okay, this is... 
actually on point, but I'm looking for something I can sell. <laughs> I'm telling That's you, they're in the jacket. Also useless. Oh, well, that's interesting. Don't ask questions. And this is going to continue for some time. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is uh, going to continue for some time, so we'll that, leave you there. I'll say, that was Keith's. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so moving oh, over. Yeah, turns around, who the fuck is Keith? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, we're going to leave you, leave you there. She's going to be pulling shit out of your backpack for a while. Trying to find something she can sell. All right. So, David, you and Robin are headed off to uh, the store. You walk in. The store definitely looks different. Um, there's quite a bit of things on display. It looks like all the books in particular are displayed in um, sort of like locked glass cases. Um, and, yeah, you'll find everything that's on that list in there. And uh, Phoebe will greet you as you both walk in. Well, yeah, this place definitely is different. I know. They really did some work around here, says Robin. Um, so do you think that was a good idea or a bad idea about the coupon? <sighs> That'd be all your money, right? Yeah, yeah, all my money. I have an idea. All right. But it does require us to go talk to somebody. Okay, who do we have to see? We'd have to find Ian. He has a bag full of nonsensical stuff that could help you. And He does. Be, you'd honestly be doing him a favor taking Juliet off his hands. And I wouldn't have to pay for anything. Exactly. So I think we should find Ian. See if he has anything in his bag that he can lend you to gift to Juliet. And then, step five... Final step of the plan is you confidently present the gift and say very confidently, Juliet, I love you. I feel like we're missing a couple steps, but we can make it work. How do we find Ian? He's normally with Howitzer, isn't he? We just have to hunt Howitzer down? Yeah. Oh, God, what if he's with Howitzer? Oh, no, who left him alone with Howitzer? <laughs> that may have been me. We need to find him immediately. Yeah, probably. Uh, we should probably check his room. They could still be sleeping. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, we'll check his room, we'll knock, and we'll go from there, I guess. Yeah. All right, so you guys head back up uh, in that direction then? Yeah, I'll I'll suggest going uh, through the uh, eating area to see... Just to kind of check to see if anybody's there, um, and if they've seen Ian or Howitzer. Um, you'd probably run into someone like Magnus. Um, he would tell you that he did see Howitzer earlier. He hasn't seen Ian yet. Um, as far as he know, Howitzer went to check out the store. Well, that at least means they're awake, because... They were in the bag last time I saw them. Well, let's head up to Ian's room and see if he's there. All right, we'll check Ian's room, then we'll check Howitzer's room. And then, if they're not in those rooms, we should probably check, Juli check Juliet's room. Sounds like a plan. And uh, I suppose you both begin walking up towards the, yep. uh, the dormitories? Okay. One second, I need I need more water. Thank you, David. Okay. We'll uh we'll leave you there for a moment and we'll head back to um Bud. I'm just gonna be randomly jumping around because I already got out of order. The order's already been messed up. Um so you woke up and my mind blanked. I completely forgot what you were doing. I was heading to go pick up my order. Right, right. So you get there. And let me open up the character sheet. And so let me just, I'm actually putting these in your inventory now. Do, 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 do. All right, so you know what one of these is for and the others yep. to, to keep. So we'll say that weighs that much. I don't actually know. 
Um, so you get your delivery. Uh, was there anything else in the store that you wanted to look up or look at? Uh, no, but I would have asked if she had room in the back for me to work for a little bit. Um, yeah, she would have let you back there. Okay. All right, so you go to the back, you begin working. Uh, I'm probably there for the next eight hours. Yep. <laughs> so okay. God help yep. anybody who's trying to find you. <laughs> uh, did you want to get the rolling out of the way, or did you want to uh, for that? Sure. All right, I don't know also exactly. You'll have to message me exactly what you're planning on, on doing, so... Um, but yeah, you'll have to tell me, um, out of the three options and then, um, okay, that's fair. Um, so I guess go ahead and roll me five D100s then. So this should be pretty easy. Okay, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I would have been really concerned if it would have been a lot less, but yeah, that's that's absolutely acceptable. So, um, I have a hangover. Have to... It's not my best day. That's fair. Um, so I know what one of those is going to be. Um, it's up to you on the other two. Oh no, all um, three. All three. Okay. Um, you'll have to add those to your inventory then. I'm assuming um, minus the one, and that's going to take you about eight hours. So. Uh, that's pretty much what you're going to be doing then for the rest of the day, it sounds like. Yep. Sean All right. has successfully put himself out of the danger. <laughs> yep. Okay, um... Just oh, for the one, we... the one, uh, deal. All right, yeah. Uh, you'll just have to... Yeah. Okay. I have a hard time keeping track of things. Um, but I'm so aware. that's it's fine. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, that's gonna be you for eight hours. We'll head over to Allison. Um, you were heading over with um, Fantasia and Crash to the store. So wouldn't I run into David on the way? Because aren't we basically just kind of switching? Um, you'd probably run into him on his way back. Uh, you'd probably pass him and Robin. Yeah. He probably got there quite a bit earlier than you guys, but he probably would have been browsing, I assume, for a little while. Mm -hmm. I don't know. T time in the Danganronpa game is really hard to keep track of, but I'm assuming you would have ran to him on the way back at least. Uh, I'd just wave at him if he didn't stop to say anything. Yeah, I, I would have waved and would have asked if uh, you had seen Ian. No, I didn't see Ian. Uh, I did see Howitzer by himself, though, earlier. Interesting. Leaving the, the dining hall. I wonder what happened to Ian, then. You know what? Hold on. It's what can I... I also have not seen Juliet, so now I'm actually. That concerns me, seeing as uh, Ian and Howitzer were uh, bunking together last night. So I would have expected. Does that mean food? Robin will together. speak up. Does that mean he's smooching on my lady as we speak? Probably not considering. I'm gonna kill him. He's gay. It's probably not consensual on Ian's part. All right, that's fair. Like I said, we're going to find Ian. We're going to get you a gift, and we're going to get you Juliet. Okay. I'm really uh, glad on, I have... Hold on, hold on. I'm really glad I have all of you to help me with this. Hold on. What? <laughs> my, my five best friends in the world. I think I counted correctly. I'm not positive. No! There's four, four. of us! I was counting my imaginary friend. Okay. Okay. Um. So you'll, you'll also help me then? 
I'll help you figure out where Ian or Juliet is to make sure that Ian's alive. <laughs> well, as uh, according to the rules, as long as he didn't leave the center district, he'll probably be fine. We don't know if he left. Yeah. We don't know where he is. All right. Well, with all of that happening, I'm assuming then all of you would have went up to the dorms. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah, that's right. why I, g I gave David a chance to, cause to talk to me just in case, but I would have kept going to the store if he didn't. <laughs> all right, that's fair. So instead of going to the store, there is now a search party out for Ian. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> I've never been so it's just, happy. It's just like it's fucking luck. I'm not touching this. <laughs> it's like, Speaking of Ian, I'll oh, go ahead. It's like, all right, Howitzer and Ian were together. Howitzer's been found. The fuck is Ian doing? <laughs> Clearly, there's a problem. Let's actually find out how Ian's doing. Ian, Marionette's still pulling shit out of your bag, trying to find oh, something to sell. I can <laughs> probably sell this, I guess. That might get me five mono coins. Uh, let me ask. <laughs> Who is Jeff? And uh, you'll hear a, a cling as uh, Juliet sort of presses her knife down a little too hard on the cinnamon roll she's dicing up. He's someone I met was at when I was in the MILF. In the, the what? what? <laughs> the what now? <laughs> Sorry. Someone I met when I was in the MILF. Did I stutter? I'm going to regret this, but uh, what is the MILF? Malitation, Independence, and Liberation Front? That sounded completely foreign to me. It was. We were doing stuff. Juliet will pipe up. What kind of stuff were you doing? Stuff of <clears throat> liberation? Uh-huh. And uh, what were you liberating exactly? People? This wasn't always exactly legal or smiled upon in the country we were in. I see. Well, you won't have to worry about that for much longer. After all, you're gonna marry me and we're gonna get settled down and have a family. And uh, Marionette's gonna keep pulling shit out of your back. I don't think we're gonna have a family. That's not That's in there. not in there anymore. <laughs> Unless you have two of those. Wow, I actually rolled a D100. You rolled enough uh, of them, man. That's fair, yeah. I never <laughs> get to use this table, so I'm making use of it while I can. Well, I suppose uh, this wig should net me a couple of mono coins. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I guess I'm, you know, a stereotypical villain. I like to monologue. Uh, so you and Juliet are getting married. Uh, oh, well... Uh, that's at least who my money's on. Actually, you and David are actually going to be fighting to the death to marry Juliet. It's it's a little complicated. I have to pick up something from the store real quick. Um, but that's going to happen. My money's on you. Funny thing is, though, it's going to happen in the center district. So, you know, whoever wins is probably dead. Um, that's that's my plan. And, uh, you know, Juliet, I'm assuming, is... Um, uh, well, I'm not going to say anything too out loud because she's, you know, like right over there. How much shit do you keep in here? Look, I was okay. the corner master for the move. I just got really good at it. So I have two packs of underwear and a... No, more than two packs. I have a lot of packs of underwear and a wig. I'm going to head down to the shop. I'm going to buy something that piqued my interest and I asked about it. Uh, you see, I really don't sleep too much, so I was up a little earlier than you. And I made my way down to the store earlier, and uh, I have some really interesting things down there. Oh. Yeah, I saw a message, but I didn't read too much of it. What all do they have? Well, they have um, a bone saw, a crowbar. Oh, I sold those. They also had some sort of chloroform, fast acting, I assume, from the way it worked. Oh, that's what it was. I thought my mouth tasted dry now. They also have a bottle of something called All the Rage, which, when ingested, uh, well, I'm pretty sure it's obvious what it does. Oh, that sounds fascinating. 
Yeah, Could you're going to learn what that milk. tastes like. Oh. Uh, and I, I digress. I hope it's watermelon flavored. Probably not, but I'm going to leave you two here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to pray that you're still alive by the time I get back. I don't see why you wouldn't be. Eh. Am I ominous about Keith? Uh, you're right. You do that. All right. Well, I'm leaving you two. And uh, she'll go to step outside. And um, the large group, as you walk up through the dormitory and uh, begin walking down the hallway, a little ways down, you see uh, you see Marionette step out of Juliet's room. She uh, brushes herself off. She's holding in one hand a lot of underwear, packs of unopened underwear, and in the other, a wig. I'm going to immediately look at Allison. What? Doesn't that look suspicious to you? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Marionette of all people coming out of Juliet's room holding a bunch of random crap you would probably expect to see in Ian's bag. Marionette will, because there's only one way to go, is walking towards you as she sees that you see of what she has in her hands. Oh, thank goodness. I was out of underwear, and Juliet apparently had a lot of extra, and uh, I don't know what I needed the wig for, but, you know, I have it. So how are, how are you all doing, fellow students? Good. Have you Literally seen Literally never cared about me before. No, I didn't. Not until you were, uh, you know, in my way. And I have a, uh, I have a lot of extra underwear for anybody who wants it. Didn't you just say you needed it? Do I look like I need this much of it? Also, some of these are for men. Are you insinuating that I need men's underwear? No, I I have a lot of un. There's I only need like one <laughs> pair. There's like fifty in here. No, why didn't you just take one pair then instead of taking all of them? Well, that's what I'm going to do. That's why I'm offering the rest to you. They're still in the unopened package. No, I'm good. Um, but have you seen Ian? We're looking for him. Oh, yeah. I saw him about, uh, I don't know, probably like 90 seconds ago. He's uh he's on a date currently. Oh god. <laughs> I know. I tried to tell him to stay away from her, but uh you know what can you do, I guess. And was this a consensual date? I didn't ask. I find it better to not get involved with that sort of thing. <laughs> right. Well, then we'll be off then as I start walking towards Juliet's room. <laughs> as you start walking, she walks past you and stops for a moment, and uh, you hear her voice again. Oh, uh, good luck getting in there, by the way. You, uh, you need Juliet's monopad for that. And then she'll continue walking. And, uh, Allison, as you get close to, uh, Juliet's door, especially right outside it, you would feel a pretty, uh, Pretty worrying aura coming from it. Oh, good lord. <laughs> so, Robin, remember what we were talking about earlier? Yeah, that I should be anybody but myself. Yes, but before that... The World of Warcraft thing? No, what you overheard from Monokuma. Oh, right. Do you want me to say it in front of everybody? Well, right now it's just me, you. Is it just me, the three of us, or was there a fourth person? It's there's you, five. Allison. <laughs> no, there's, it's you, Allison, Crash, Fantasia, and Rob. Yeah, you're right. There is five. Hmm. Yeah, I feel this is necessary. 
Okay, I will tell my story again. So, I was walking by Grace's room, and I absentmindedly said, Huh, I wonder what's going to happen to her room. Um, now that she's gone, and Monokuma had popped out out of, well, I don't know where he pops out from, but he popped out, and he said, um, that there was a way that you could get into someone else's room without needing their monopad, and he sort of gave me a clue, and that clue was that I should read up about it. Re read on it? Read about it. He said I should read about it. So, that's all I've got. I'm going to pull out my monopad and see if there's anything on it that wasn't there before. Uh, nope, the exact same list. Well, I'm going to try the, the sensible thing first and knock. All right, Ian, you hear a knock from the other side of the door. <laughs> the rest of you hear Ian screaming for help. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. You then hear Juliet's voice. Oh, don't listen to him. He's being dramatic. We're role-playing. I love role-play. I look towards Robin. See, I told you. I salute you, David. <laughs> All right. You should read up on it. How, what do we need to read up on to open a door? Because looking at the door, the only way physically to open it would be the monopad, right? Yep. There is a reader by every door, placing your monopad up by the door. As long as it's your door opens the door. The door is incredibly uh, sturdy. So unless, uh, unless you have like a rocket launcher laying around, you're not really going to be able to, you know, try and charge it and break it down. Hmm. <laughs> I look to the others that are with me. Any ideas? Honestly, unless there's something in one of these books in the store, but somehow I doubt that it's in June. And we could try the books at the store, I guess, says Crash. Um, at the very least, it's an idea. I don't have any others. But there was only a couple of books. There was an erotica, and then all of Julian's books, which I know Julian's books are not And then this one gonna... called Planting the Seeds of Despair, the Purpose of Hope's Valley. <sighs> that one's way too expensive for us. So that kind of narrows it down to Julian's books or the other one. <laughs> How likely do we think that it's in that planting the seeds of despair? I mean, honestly, it could go either way. I think that she would, that Monokuma wouldn't have uh, dropped that kind of hint without it having some sort of price that would make us suffer. True. My head is hurting too bad for this. <clears throat> Fantasia will speak up. Well, it's tough to say because on one hand, I don't think he would mention it unless it was physically possible for us to obtain it. But on the other hand, it seems like such an overpowered thing to this game, if you want to call it that, that I could also see it being incredibly expensive. So I'm kind of in the neutral territory. I suppose we can focus on the one we can afford. Unless we think it's in Julian's books, but I don't know why it would be. 
Well, what if I was to say that we could afford that expensive book if we pulled some money together? Uh, that would take 12 and a half of us. No, it'd just take four of us. Robin will pipe up. Do you have a, a night job I don't know about or something? <laughs> well, I don't know why, but I pull out my bag of coins. I have a thousand. I see. So if I can get 250 more, can buy it, and whoever pitches in, we can all share whatever knowledge is in there. Robin takes out uh, his 100 mono coins and gives it to you. All right. I'll give my 100 over. All right, just 50 left. And Fantasia will give you a hundred. Okay. Well, I'm gonna run down there real quick and uh, buy that book. Cool. I'm gonna try and break into the room while you're doing that. Yep. Be right back, <laughs> and I'm gonna just book it. <laughs> Pun intended. Yes. Uh... Okay. <laughs> All right, so you run down to the uh, store. Um, Phoebe greets you. Hello. How can I help you today? Back so soon, I see. Yes, I would like to buy the uh, Planting the Seeds of Despair, Purpose of Hope's Valley. Ah, that one's my favorite. And she uh, hops over the counter. She has a key. Um, all the books are in locked glass cases. She unlocks the case. She hands the book to you. An excellent decision. And I'll hand her the the money. You know, sometimes we don't always find what we're looking for. But in this case, I hope it serves you well. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully that's the case. And I'm assuming I... you uh, open it. Yeah. As you open it, the only thing you see, it almost looks like a yearbook. There's pictures of students. Yeah. Not a lot of students. Um, it seems like a pretty small class, and it's all of you. You would notice, however, that there does seem to be a small detail. Um... As you flip through the pages, it looks like they're, uh... Well, I suppose, are you going to end up sharing this with everybody, or do you want me to message it to you first? I'll at least share it with the group that shared money, because I, I told them I'd do that. Okay, I'll just say it out loud then, because it'll probably get spread around anyway. Um, there is a small... One of the, um, one of the pages has a section for foreign exchange students... Um, from Hope's Peak Academy, and that is where you find uh, one of your deceased classmates. The rest of you would be in the general, um, sort of where the general students are, for Hope's Valley. Interesting. Uh, but that's all you find. Well, that is not what I was expecting. Well, I'm going to head back and obviously share what I found. Okay, uh, let's head over to the other group real quick. You guys are attempting to break into the room. Okay, look. Robin. <laughs> yeah. You said that you're really into Juliet, right? I want to be. Now's your chance. Just try and seduce her through the door. Win her over. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I like this idea. Um, <laughs> I hope she wasn't listening to this entire conversation because that'd be real awkward. No, no, that's just going to prove your devotion more. All right, um, Juliet, uh, I hope you're listening. I just want you to know that I am not currently myself, 
and that I, I may have strong feelings for you and um, a, a gift. I, ha I have a gift. I don't know what it is yet. Um, and I was really hoping that we could be together. I, I can give you my binoculars. I don't know why you'd need binoculars. I feel like I'm failing at this. No, no, keep going. <laughs> She's not saying anything. All I hear is Ian screaming, I think. No, I'm just accepting fate. <laughs> That's fair. You're doing good, kid. Keep it up. <laughs> I believe at you. Um. Oh God, what do I do? T uh, talking about hobbies and stuff, right? That's that's something people do. Um. Right. That's a thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a role thing. Role play. Role play. Remember, she likes to role play. <laughs> right. So the lonely, muscular orc, his veins throbbing and pulsating. He's waiting for you behind the door. I probably I don't I don't think this doesn't feel right. It's working. I'm trying to move over to him. You hear Juliet's voice. Uh, I'm not even paying attention. I'm busy baking. These are going to taste so good. And by this time, David, you return. Well, unless there's some secret code in here that I just don't understand, it might have been a dud. Though it has interesting information. Fantasia sighs. <sighs> and she hands you another 100 monocoins. Just get the other one to be safe. All right. I'll hand the... Uh... Planting the seeds of despair to Allison's like here you can look it over while I'm out there. Maybe you'll find something I didn't. And I'll run back. <laughs> and back to the store you go. Uh Phoebe greets you. Hello. I'm back so soon. Uh, I hate that I even have to say this, but I'd like to buy the novella erotica lexicon of lewd. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. What would you like to buy? <laughs> you heard me the first time. <laughs> ah, that book is one of my favorites. I thought the other Do one you know was one what of your it's favorites. about. Look, they're all my favorite. I sell them. Enlighten me. What's it about? It's about two lovers trapped in opposite castles. They're both from families that hate each other, but they still find a way to make their love work and visit each other in the night. I mean, I guess the worst case scenario, this might just help Robin. <laughs> uh, Phoebe, uh, as there's, uh, you'll see Magnus, by the way, in the shop, and a couple others that are looking at you, giving you a weird look, and Phoebe will say quite loudly, One Novellia Erotica Lexicon of Lewd. That'll be 69 monocoins. I will place down the mono coins. I do so hope you'll enjoy your Novelia Erotica Lexicon of Lewd. <laughs> and I will just start thumbing through. I would advise you to read that somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I mean, seriously, right here in public in my store. Yes. I feel no shame. Well, if you have another hundred monocoins, I might be able to interest you in some more books by a renowned Julian Fairfield. Yeah, no, I don't need that smut. Right. Enjoy your Novellia Erotica Lexicon of Lewd, then. <laughs> <laughs> start heading back as I thumb through this. As you start walking, uh, you'll hear Magnus, um... Hey, um, can I, can I borrow that after you're done? For no reason in particular. Sure. It just see, clearly seems like an interesting book. Yeah, I mean, for context, we're trying to find a way to save Ian. You don't have to explain anything to me. No, no, Ian's about to die. 
I'm sure he is. <laughs> all right. Whatever. So I'll head off. What does is, what is the book say? Anything? It is exactly as I described, but thumbing through the pages, you will find what looks to be a bookmark. All right, I'll go to the bookmark. <clears throat> it's just, it's a pretty stiff bookmark, um, but that's it. The page that it's on, um, it is depicting a scene where the two lovers, for the first time, finally... The pause makes it sound worse than it is, but they finally find a way to see each other. Uh-huh. Um, but that's all you'll find. As I'm I'm thumbing through, I'm <clears throat> I'm a DM. I'm good at puzzles. I'm looking for any possible puzzle that might be in this book. Any sort of like anagram puzzle, you won't yes. find anything. Oh god damn it. Just the bookmark, friend. And I'm assuming you run back up to the uh to the others. Yeah, though I have an idea. So I'm gonna run back up to the others. I'm gonna wait, take wait, wait, I also have an idea though while you're gone. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's let's see. All right. What's your idea? Hey, uh, Juliet. Mm-hmm. I have a picture of Ian here. <laughs> <laughs> what uh? What kind of picture? Oh, it just shows him. Uh, it, it's a yearbook, right? That's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's a yearbook. It's showing him uh, in. It's a yearbook picture, so he's all dressed up. Really? Yeah. Then rip out the page and slide it under the door. No, you're not. No, we're gonna. Well, you'll get it if you open the door. I'll get it eventually. <laughs> so uh, you can slide it under the door. I can take it from you later. Well, I think we can get it to you later. I want you to open the door. <laughs> right, I'll get right on that. And you'll hear a ding. Oh, uh -huh. more cinnamon rolls. Okay, okay, Nick, at hearing that, can I say something to Juliet? Sure. Hey, Juliet, dear. Mm-hmm. For that next batch, do you think we could use a special ingredient? Oh, are we talking about, uh, well, what did you have in mind? When you undressed me, did you see the little baggies that were stuck inside my socks? No. Oh. What what I, baggies? The ones with the <clears throat> oregano. I feel like that would ruin the taste of my cinnamon rolls. And oh. uh, also, you don't have to worry about a special ingredient. I've got one of my own. Trust me, it's my favorite special ingredient. I'll eat anything with it. That's fine. You won't taste mine anyway. Mm. Okay, then. Sorry, I I'll be doing all the cooking. So, uh, no backseat cookers. Alright. And she will continue baking. And probably about this time, David, you'd run up and meet the group. I will hand the book off to someone, but I'll crash take immediately <laughs> and humbly will reach out for the book. But I will take the bookmark. <clears throat> yeah, that book's not helping us. Uh, but I do want to try this. I'm going to hold the bookmark up to the uh, monopad scanner. You figured it out. Ding, 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 ding. Um, Ian, you'll hear, a, you'll hear a ding, but this one sounds different. And Juliet, upon hearing the ding, will um, 
reflexively look towards her uh, not so easy bake oven and she'll open it and she'll be really confused. Uh, the door does open. Well, time to kick the door in. As I say, Ian, this is a rescue mission. <laughs> You're all gonna die. <laughs> I'm staying out in the hallway. Juliet seems incredibly confused. You weren't supposed to be able to open that door. Listen, I'm a dungeon master. Doors are no problem. This is one dungeon you're not going to walk out of. And uh, you'll see she starts spinning two knives that she's dual wielding. Do you not remember the rules Monokuma gave? I don't follow rules. As long as I'm together with both of you at the end, that's all I care about. Oh, but that's impossible. There's no way we'd be going to the same place. What are you talking about? Well, based on the observations I've seen of you, you'll be cast into the deepest pits of hell. I'm not. That's, that's probably true, but, you know. Which means, at the end, we won't be together. But, I'm here to offer you a counter deal. Hey, Robin! He'll poke his head meekly through the door. Um, I think we might have met once or twice or not at all. My my name's Robin. I, I was supposed to be the manly orc that you were talking, you know, through the, the door with earlier. Juliet. And, uh... Robin Just here. wanted to say... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. Robin here has something really important he wants to say to you. Deep down from the heart. Robin? Right. <clears throat> uh. He raises his hand, his finger. He goes to speak. Then he immediately starts walking out of the room. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I grab him, him by the collar. <laughs> I stayed out in the hallway. I just pushed him back in the room. Look, I didn't get a gift yet. Listen, the gift is yourself. That is the most heartwarming thing anyone's ever said to me. And I know she's not going to uh, accept it. So before she murders me, I just like to say thank you. <laughs> Juliet, Robin uh, sort of speaks up. The gift is myself. And he uh, spreads his arms wide open. And uh, Juliet seems very confused. What he's trying to say is he is madly in love with you. Well, unfortunately, I'm engaged. I know all you boys do nothing but fight over me, but eventually you're going to have to learn that I have to settle down. I'm not fighting over you. I'm fighting for Howitzer. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're what? I'm fighting for Howitzer. You see her eyes narrow. Where the fuck is Howitzer? No, Good no, question. No. Hold on. Juliet, you deserve to be loved just as much as your love deserves to be reciprocated. Ian is not that type of person for you. I'm not the type of person to settle down. But Robin here is madly in love with you. Why don't you at least give him a chance? All right, I'll make you all a deal. If Robin can give me an appropriate gift, one that just screams how worthy he is to be my lover and how much he loves me, then maybe I'll consider. All right. In the meantime, can we not have Ian tied up to a chair? Please put some clothes on him. Please. My eyes are scarred. It's okay, it's kind of breezy in here. Fine, you can take him. But I'm keeping his bag. You'll get it back once Robin presents his gift to me. Ian, are you okay with that? The really dangerous stuff is locked up and she can't get into it. We'll be, quote-unquote, okay. Deal. Robin pipes up. 
Ian, I was kind of hoping to get a gift from you to give to her. It's okay, Robin. We'll we'll cr- we'll find something. You'll find something that really shows how much you love her. I don't even have the slightest idea of what to get her. Don't worry. We'll talk. As I start untying Ian. Okay, it's- Ian, you are now untied. I say, it's okay, Robin. I looked at the model shop list earlier. I have an idea, and I start walking. Okay. Ian, Ian you, grab your Ian, coat. Grab Ian, your coat. <laughs> they get thrown over my shoulder on the way out. I am a man on a mission. My bag is in danger. Oh, my God. I'm going to run so, and try and fine. stop Ian and say, please put your clothes on for three seconds. No. Just puts Ian. clothes on for three seconds and then removes them. <laughs> yes. Please, you are about to go down into public. I'll put on pants. Thank you. Just pants. Actually, okay. Actually, no, just the coat. Uh, as you uh as you walk outside, Ian, and you're putting your trench coat on, you're sort of just setting it over your shoulders and you look up and you see Howitzer, and Howitzer goes, <laughs> Nice. Hey, big As uh, boy. he's he was walking to his uh, he was walking to his dorm, but didn't find you, so he's been on the lookout for you. Juliet kidnapped me with Marionette's help. They're gonna kill us all. Let's go. I like where this is going, and uh, he'll he'll also join. All right, so where are you guys headed now? I'm going to the store, and I'm relaying Marionette's plan to everybody. Okay. So I guess we're all going to the store. Except for well, no, actually isn't that where Bud is? You don't where know. Where did that. I misread that? You don't know that. Yeah, Bud we, has mysteriously vanished. He's doing something. Alright, as your large group makes it to the store, uh David, upon seeing you, Phoebe will say, Welcome back. Did you enjoy your Novelia erotica lexicon of lewd? It was helpful. I'm sure it was. I'll walk up to the counter in just my jacket, slap 35 model coins down on the counter and say, I want the Shifu chef knife set. Sifu chef knife set. Whatever. Give it to me. She will hand it to you, so go ahead and take off uh, take off the 35 mono coins and... Yep. Um, you can just make another thing in your inventory, or I guess you're giving them away. I'm so giving it straight to Robin, yes. Yeah. This, this is perfect, he says, and uh, he holds the knife set. They look very dangerous and very well crafted. Yeah, she can't turn me down with this. There's no way. Well, he addresses the entire party. It's uh it's been a real fun. I've uh I've we've laughed. I've grown. This might be the last time any of you ever see me. Just want you all to know uh if I die, I'm in a better place. What am I saying? It you have to get your bag, I guess. I guess we all have yeah, to make trip up to you. Juliet's yeah. room. <laughs> Hopefully this is uh the only time that um you know, your life is in danger. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I used to be in a... <clears throat> well, we'll not get into it right now, but I've been in danger before. Howitzer seems to smile a little wider as you say that. Um, would anybody... Later, he, he nods. Uh, would anybody else like to check out anything in the store real quick, or are you guys just heading straight back up there? I think we're heading straight yeah. back up there at this point. All right. As you go to leave, um, David, um, Phoebe will address you. Uh, thanks again for coming, and I do so hope you'll enjoy your Novelia Monica <sighs> Lexicon of Lewd. Oh, I've already handed it off to somebody else. I see. It's getting passed around very well. As I walk out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Um, you all walk out of the store and straight up to Juliet's room. Yep. All right. Um, you get to Juliet's door. Um, I suppose you knock. I'll let Robin do it. Robin will uh, steal himself. He will uh, hold the knife set behind his back. He will take a couple deep breaths. He will uh, He will knock on the door. Your lover has returned, says Robin. The door opens and Juliet motions for all of you to come inside. All right, let's get this over with. I suppose you have something you think will impress me. And uh, at this point, Robin will get on one knee and he will present the knife set. And as he does so, uh, you especially, Allison, the normal sort of glassy, almost dead look in her eyes seems to brighten a little bit. Um, it's almost like her real self shines through for but a few brief moments. Both of her ran, or her rans, her hands raised to her mouth uh, as her mouth sort of falls agape a little bit. She takes the knife set. The handles are black. The blades are exquisite. Uh, the knife set sort of comes on a belt that you can strap around yourself, like a little chef's belt. Um, she straps it around. Her hands nimbly sort of catch at all the knives and sort of pluck at them, pull them out, sort of slice, uh, slice and swing through the air. And uh, genuine tears do start to flow down her face. And uh, she uh, seems like the yandere part of herself has receded a little bit, and she goes back into the, uh, the Juliet that the rest of you sort of know uh, when you first met her, the sort of shy and reclusive. I, uh, I can't believe you bought these for me. I'll cherish them forever. And, uh, she sort of breaks down and begins crying, and Robin gives her a hug. And he looks back at the rest of you and nods, a job well done. My shoulders go slack as the tension finally leaves I'm them. I'm slowly backing out of the room. I, I grab my bag, put all the stuff that Marianne took out of there that's still around. It back in the bag, and I walk out of the room and say, how is her? We're leaving. As you go to leave, Monokuma pops up in front of the door and stops you all. Oh, boy. Well, seems like all of you had such an eventful day. Yeah, some of this hectic since what happened with Keith. <laughs> well, yeah. seems like you've all grown a little bit closer. I want to ask all of you something. Do you consider yourselves friends? I look at Howard Sinder and say, oh, yes. He seems to take special interest at that. So, the answer then is yes, I assume. Yeah, sure. Because yeah. Uh, I'm here to show you that you can't be friends. In fact, you may not believe this quite yet, but... I'm the only thing holding all of you back from murdering each other. Don't believe me? I can prove it if you'd like. How about we play a little game? Oh, I'm good. And I start going inside the bag. You crawl inside the bag? Yep. Monokuma laughs. I wasn't asking. So we're gonna play. Let's see. Oh boy. One of you... One of your classmates, I should say. Used to be a freelance bomber. That bit of information might be important to another one of your classmates. But I wonder who. Since you all think you can live together, let's see you prove it. He laughs. And then he disappears. What was that all about? Crash pipes up. Not sure. Hmm. Allison, do you still have that yearbook? Yeah, do you 
want it. I'd like to thumb through it and see. Here if you go. We can get anything you useful can out keep of this. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking psychopath, Allison. <laughs> you paid most of the money for it. Yeah. There's got to be some reason why this was so expensive. So it has to have some use. <sighs> I will poke my head out of the bag and just say, he was talking about me. That you were a bomber? A former? You were a freelance bomber? How it's her pipes up? Used to. Not anymore. Somehow this doesn't surprise me. Yeah, not even a little bit. Yeah. With the amount of shit that you've pulled out of there and, you know, destroyed part of the Habidome. That was him. Fair enough. May have been him, but drugs. it was a result because of you. Regardless. Hey, it's okay. Everything's locked up where other people can't get to it right now. All right, with that, how would you guys like to take a little bit of a maybe five-minute break or so? Yeah. yeah. I could refill my water. All right, chat, we'll be back in a few minutes. BRB.
Is Ian back? Okay. Chat, we're back. That we are. You've managed to save Ian. Congratulations. Woo! All right. Uh, real quick, I do have to look at something. Do 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 do. do. Um, make sure you deduct the money and stuff, David. Yeah. Yep, I did. Uh, still says you have a straight thousand, in, at least on my end. Nope, it's down there to 50. Okay, it it just changed now. That's weird. Maybe I had to click on it a bunch of times. You might have had a sheet up on that, so if you didn't yeah. refresh it in any way, shape, or form, it might not have changed. Didn't yeah. update, I guess. Okay, so with that being said, welcome back. I hope everybody liked that little puzzle I had set out. Um, with that being said, it is pretty much late in the afternoon, um, but it is not yet per se nighttime. Um, so I'm assuming you all leave Juliet's room. What are your guys' plans, I guess? Because that's, as far as um, the daily plan, that was pretty much all I had planned for the most part, so... <laughs> Um, I will look over at Howitzer and ask if he has anything planned. Uh, not at the moment, no. Care to help me put something together? Uh, depends on what it is, I guess. It's just a side project of a thing. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so you and Howitzer are running off somewhere? I'm going to my room and inviting him into the bag with me. All right, he uh, he climbs into the bag. All right. I am going to text this to you, Nick. Oh, boy, I'm worried. Uh, uh... It's always worrisome when it has to be texted to me. What are you talking about? That's nothing to worry about there. I am incredibly concerned, and he hasn't even said anything to me yet. I see him typing. Faster, Ian, faster. Yeah. <laughs> I guess real quick, how did how did you guys all like that little uh, side adventure? <laughs> that was good. Uh, it's, it's entertaining. Gonna die. I had forgotten that he had spent the night, um, sort of like in Howitzer's room. So at first, Marionette was just gonna slip a piece of paper under his door saying, Hey, meet me in my room. And then he'd go there and get ganked. Uh, I had to change things up a little bit, but I guess it still worked out. Fair. I thought it was funny. Um, so yeah. That was, uh, God, what are you, you're still typing. I'm really worried. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. I just got it. Let's see here. I see. All righty then. All right. Yeah, he will, uh, he will help you with that. Okay, sweet. That probably would only take you a couple hours because that's something that you've probably know how to do. Um, but there's really only a couple hours left of, oh god, okay. Really only a couple hours left of free time to begin with, so, uh, with that being said, that's pretty much what you and him will be doing for the rest of the day, so to speak. Um, yep. so let's move on, I guess. David, what are your plans for the rest of the, uh, evening? I'm gonna we go... can call it, I guess, probably about six by now. Yeah, I'm gonna go get food. That is fair. So you're heading straight to the banquet hall then? Yeah, I'm gonna head to the banquet hall, see what's there, and if nothing's to my fancy, I might cook something. Okay, as you get down to the banquet hall, you'd see stuff like um, hamburgers, chicken, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, um, just a wide assortment of things. Um, that's basically it. Just your stereotypical American uh, dinner. <laughs> Mashed potatoes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to look. Do I see any mozzarella sticks? Um, 
You know what? Roll me a roll me a D one hundred. How bad do you want him? Very badly. Apparently bad enough. Yes, you find mozzarella sticks. All right, I grab uh, two cheeseburgers and uh, pile on a bunch of mozzarella sticks onto a separate plate. All right, and then I'm assuming you eat at the table. You'll find Magnus. Yeah. You'll find Marionette. You will find, let's see, who else here? Castanet. Uh, Harshman. Uh, that's pretty much it, as it is right around actual dinner time. Yeah, I'll sit down nearby people and just make small talk. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to retreat to my room for the night. You'll notice Marionette wearing the wig that she'd walked out of Juliet's room. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'll I'll make the the quip. Didn't take you for a wig wearing gal, but okay. Well, neither did I until I tried it. Fair. You, uh, you didn't cook those yourself, did you? No. Oh, you poor fool. They're probably poisoned. I did warn you about this, David. Did you? Yes, I did relay what Marionette was planning to do. No, that wasn't anything she was planning on doing. The only thing you got from her plan also was that, uh, she said specifically, by the time I'm done, there's going to be two trials and five dead bodies. Oh yeah. Um, I think she. I think I said she started to go into detail, and then stuff happened. She was talking about using the all the rage stuff. Uh, yeah, that. Uh, she was. Yeah, I did forget about that. She did mention that. Um, but your mozzarella sticks taste completely fine. Yeah. Eh, I doubt they're poisoned, as I continue to stuff mozzarella sticks down my face. You wouldn't happen to have uh, 15 monocoins I could borrow? No. Kind of spent all mine. That's a shame. I was going to sell you a pack of underwear. (laughs) (laughs) You wouldn't... You won't believe this. The shop wouldn't buy literally anything that I had. That doesn't surprise me, especially seeing as it came out of Ian's bag, probably. Apparently nothing I owned was deadly enough. Yeah, no, that, based on what they sell, yeah, that makes a a lot of sense. Uh, That'll pretty much be the extent of how how she sort of openly talks to you, so unless you were to initiate any more, she'll go back to eating her food. Nope. All right. Um, Bud, you're still doing your thing. Uh, Ian, you're doing your thing. Allison, what are you up to? Well, I can no longer afford the medical supplies. So I'm suffering. That's a shame. <laughs> um, I would probably follow Crash and Fantasia around. Okay. I don't remember what Crash said he wanted to do, but I kind of want to see them race each other since apparently Fantasia's a really good driver, if I remember right. (laughs) Are you heading to the racetrack then? Oh, no, I'm following them. I haven't made any suggestions. I'm just sad I can no longer afford the medical supplies that may have had ibuprofen. Uh, well, Crash will sort of bring this up. I feel like, uh, I feel like gambling, so, um, yeah. I'm gonna go see about the racetrack or the gambling tent I found. Um, not sure what you two are gonna do. I'll look over at Fantasia. The answer to your question, David, is yes. Okay. And I suppose with that information you understand now? Yep. (laughs) <laughs> would you consider me an asshole <laughs> oh, absolutely <laughs> okay good <laughs> I was wondering how long it would take someone to notice alright anyways with that out of the way oh, sorry what um, so Crash says he's gonna go off to the uh, the races what did you say in response 
Uh, I said I looked over at Fantasia to see what she was up to. Uh, I'm gonna spend the next couple of hours with Castanet. Hmm. Debating on going in the book that I gave. That would be, I'm going with Crash because I'd, I'd have to hunt down David. Or the other one. I'll watch Crash gamble and try and help him make less bad choices. <laughs> You're going to try and help him make less bad choices? Yep. Uh, okay, so you both head off to the racetrack. It's starting at this point to get dark. There's probably only perhaps an hour, an hour and a half left. And, um... Sadly, as you get there, the bears turn you away. It's too close to nighttime. They're not going to have any uh, any events currently that's over for the day. Oh, yeah, no, we need to go back if it's close to nighttime. Nope, going yeah. back. You guys have about an hour left. Are you just heading back? Yeah, because I don't want to get locked out. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so you guys head over um, to the racetrack. You head back after getting turned away. Um, by the time you get back from all of that, you've probably got a good 45 minutes, 30 minutes left before nighttime. If there was anything real quick you wanted to do outside, I'm assuming not. Not outside. Like, I might try and hunt down David to look in that book, but that's about it. Also, is that... Hold on. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have another one who noticed. <laughs> We're striking two for four. <laughs> so I assume now you understand the point behind that. She's she's thinking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I crack myself up. <laughs> uh, all right, so you you head back, and that's um. Did you have anything you wanted to do in the dorms? No, I mean, other than maybe looking back through the book again, but... All right, so you try to find David? Yeah. All right, I guess how long would you be in the banquet hall for, David, until you um left? Oh, probably only like 15, 20 minutes. Just enough time to eat. Okay, so by this time, you'd probably be back in your room? Yeah, and I'd be starting to read this yearbook. Okay. Um yeah, you wouldn't find you wouldn't find David in the banquet hall then. So probably a safe assumption you could check his room if you wanted. I will go to his room and knock. Hello? Hey. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Walk over to the door and open up. What's up? Um, so I figure I should probably give you a warning that if Juliet goes back on her psycho bullshit, she wants the yearbook. Got it, so it doesn't leave my room. <laughs> um but also I wanted to look through that since it costs so much money there's got to be something in there right that's just what I was starting to do want to join me sure <laughs> all right um <clears throat> I will grab the uh I'd ha probably have an extra chair next to my desk right yep that's fine yeah <clears throat> grab it and pull it up and start looking at it Especially for your room, you definitely have an extra chair. Yeah. With your six monitors. <laughs> six monitors, <laughs> nine mouses. I don't know if computer mouses, mice in the plural, I don't know. But God. he's got them. At least three towers with like eight hard drives. It's practically conscious. Listen, I am the ultimate DM. The machines are learning. I have, I have a D&D &D table with chairs and minis. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to start looking through this yearbook more in depth. Okay, as you both look through it, you won't find anything. But eventually, um, a little bit goes by. Perhaps, I don't know how long you guys would spend poring over it. I'm assuming at least a little while. I'd yeah. be spending probably the next four hours looking through this. 
I wouldn't spend the next four hours. But I would probably max two hours. After about an hour goes by, uh, Monokuma pops into your room. Oh, Jesus. You would just appear everywhere, don't you? You have no idea. Oh, um, I'm not really normally one for giving things away for free, but I figured I'd just reward you all for, uh, helping Ian out earlier. So, uh, you seem really interested in that book. There's two things. One, the main point is one of you is a foreign exchange student from Hope's Peak, the rest of you from Hope's Valley, and, uh, the other important thing, well, it says it right in the title, and it even gives you the answer. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm looking through it. You don't have to look through it anymore. It says it right there. You might have to reorganize it a little bit. The purpose of Hope's Valley. Planting, planting the seeds, the seeds of, despair. of despair. That was your school's purpose. Those are the only two important things associated with that book. It's just I'd hate to see you waste so much time looking through that poor old thing when you could be plotting a murder. You know, I'd rather look over the book. Do it yourself. You won't find anything else. And uh, he'll pop out after that. And then uh, a couple hours. Oh, go ahead. And then just to clarify, because the information wasn't useful earlier, the foreign exchange student was who? The only person that has a Japanese name and is also deceased. Well, there's two people deceased, but I I understand who you're Sorry. talking about. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> uh, Choharu. Did I say only person deceased? You did. No, you said Grace the only person still alive. That... Japanese name that's deceased. I think we could yeah. figure that out. Uh, you'll see under the foreign exchange student has uh, Choharu's yeah. face, picture, or whatever. So she's a foreign exchange student and is also kind of the cause of everything happening right now. Well, that's great. Kind of makes sense why she'd want to kill us then, if our school's purpose was to plant the seeds of despair. Yeah. Though I don't fully believe that. Because... If... If the whole purpose was to plant the seeds of despair... Then... Everything okay, Ian? Yeah. <laughs> we then, hear him dying inside. Uh, then why don't we remember anything about it? That is the question. Maybe we could ask Ian. He seems to have more memories than you. Like, I have some memories, but nothing about this school. There. Yeah, I guess we can, talk, we can talk to Ian tomorrow, see if he remembers anything more than his distant past. <sighs> Alright, well, probably I'll gonna stand. turn in. Yeah, I'll stand up and head out. He's doing the Midwestern thing where you slap both knees. Well, well it's about <laughs> that time. It's about that time. Well, I better be hitting the old dusty trail. <laughs> but this is your route. Suppose it's getting kind of late. <laughs> we ready to rock and roll? Good night. Yeah, I'd leave. <laughs> finally go to bed. And finally go to bed. And then we all find out what Bud's been up to. Uh, not, not quite, no. I know. <laughs> it was a joke. So it's around um, midnight that I finish. Oh, is it? How does oh, that work out? Uh, oh, wait, no, you're still in the center district. You're good. Okay. So 
the center district, think of like a circle, and then you have the north gate, east gate, et cetera, et cetera. Those big gates that go to the other parts of the, the park are what close. All the things so, we don't have access to. Got it. Well, you have a access to the uh, the southern one, at least, uh, which is like the entrance of the park. But that that close. So that's where all like the amusement park rides and stuff are. OK, so that closes. But you're fine if you're in the center district, which includes the shop. So the shop in. Bed and arms. yeah, dorms Safe. and stuff. Okay. Yep. Um, so real quick, as uh, as you're all winding down for bed, um, nighttime comes and you do hear Marionette screaming very angrily. You catch a few words as some of you are in your rooms, um, more so Allison than the rest of you, because the rest of you are off in the, the boy side, but she is screaming kind of loud. Uh, you hear the words, plan ruined, um, uh, <laughs> Robin's garbage, you love Ian, etc., etc. just a lot of screaming. But after a couple minutes, it sort of calms down, and uh, Allison, you hear, you hear after that a door slam. <laughs> Nope, I'm not going out there. Nope. So, as I was going to say something, but um, <laughs> based on what I was going to do, I actually am going to hear that as well. <laughs> oh, <'Cause>... no. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, sometime after Allison left, and what I assume most people would be in bed, I would have uh, slipped out and gone to Grace's room. Okay. Um, as you go in there, um, you'll find it's immaculate, pretty much the same as when you saw it last. Um, you won't really find too much of interest in there. Um, but as you're getting ready to leave, you hear Marionette scream, You fucking what? Why is he still not tied to the chair? Why is he tied to the chair? What? <laughs> what is going on? I had a plan, Juliet, and you fucking ruined it. What am I supposed to do with this? Robin's trash. I swear you can't get good help these days. You know what? Never mind. I'm just... I'm leaving. Ruined everything. And she uh, she stomps out and that's when you hear the door, uh, her door slam. Yeah, I'm gonna stay in Grace's room for a while um, and just kind of poke around see if there's just any, any information or anything, which there doesn't seem to be, but I'm just gonna in there for a little bit nope um it is completely immaculate with everything organized um you don't find anything hidden um it's the exact same way as when you were last inside all right no nothing like on her past or anything through her belongings nope okay um she also didn't really have too much of belongings just ballerina yeah. stuff all right after Let me double check but i'm pretty sure that was like the only thing she had um okay. and to be honest she had her backpack on her when she well no i guess we can say she didn't um but yeah she didn't have anything um anything hidden that you can find okay after yeah, i'm gonna give it like 45 minutes after i hear that door slam i'll sneak back to my room a safe distance of time <laughs> yes Okay. <laughs> um, I guess, um, Bud, was there anything since by about now you'd be done doing what you're doing and free to do whatever you want? Uh, did you have any plans real quick? Uh, I'd see if I can get into the kitchen. If I can't, I'd just go back to my room. Uh, you can. Cool. I grab something to eat, then go in, uh, something quick to eat, like fruit or some shit, and then go back to my room. Okay. Um, and then that's going to be it for you, I assume? Yeah. Okay, um, unless anybody has anything else they want to do, that's probably going to be about where we call it. I hope that session wasn't um, too short. Go ahead. I would ask Howitzer what his preference for the sleeping arrangements would be. Oh, you plan on pulling an all-nighter, huh? Oh, my. We can. Well... I don't know. I don't have any preference, I'll be honest. You do. Top. You're not wrong. But, uh, you know, I'd have to get to know you a lot better for that, so uh, I hope you're not daydreaming too hard. 
A little. <laughs> You'll have to dream a little longer. Okay. Going back to your room, buddy? Well, he slaps both his knees. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I should head out. Okay. I'll walk him to the door. All right. Um you walk in. He uh he takes his leave and uh he walks back to his room. And uh that's probably going to be where we're going to leave it. I hope that wasn't too short of a session. No, it's fine. I hope you guys all had fun saving Ian. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Now, I have to ask, Nick, what would Mm -hmm. you have done if we would have just left Ian alone and said, fuck it? (laughs) That's a good question. (laughs) Sometimes as a DM, you have to take a leap of faith. To answer your question, I probably would have... Well, that's not true. I guess I did have an inkling of an idea. Improvised. Uh, completely. But eventually, Robin would have broke in and declared his love, and Ian would have been saved that way. Um, you, you can tell, obviously, I wasn't going to off him because I was doing everything publicly, so... Um, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I did have an idea if you guys wanted to do something else. I was hoping you wouldn't do something else, but uh, everything turned out the way it turned out, so... I thought about it, but I was like, uh, <laughs> right now there's target on ian's back and technically mine so might as well help robin out (laughs) right i thank you profusely (laughs) when you didn't like flag because i would have walked near there uh earlier i was like oh no there's no way i'd know i have no reason (laughs) no reason (laughs) yeah i mean i i did state earlier like i was asking people like if they'd seen ian so as soon as you were like, uh, kind of waved high, I was like, ah, have you seen Ian? <laughs> and there then... is, uh, oh, go ahead. Nope, gone. I was going to say, there is a couple things I'm going to point it out because eventually it's going to be obvious. It looks like two of you saw already. Um, but if you check the mono shop inventory, you'll notice that all of a sudden the uh, one seat on the escape submarine is a little cheaper. Um, so... There's that. Oh. And uh fuck, what was the other thing? My mind just blanked. Yeah, I had I had that inventory open this whole time just so there was something on screen for the viewers and I was like, that's not a two anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> I was like, that's not a six anymore. Oh, I had one other thing I was gonna say and it slipped my mind and I'm sure it was important, but uh oh well. I'll I'll take care of it later, I guess. (laughs) All right. Well then, Chet. Oh, fuck. I just remembered what it was. Um, So this was the first instance of, um, I'm not sure if the audience knows this, so I'm going to make it clear. All of our players have a secret. And this was the first instance of a player's secret coming to light. So whatever that means. Um, But I just wanted to sort of mark the occasion, so... That was the other thing. I remembered. I almost forgot. <laughs> fair. Fair, fair. Can't wait to hear about everyone else's secrets. <laughs> uh, but chat, thank you for joining us. I hope you guys enjoyed as much as we did. Uh, join us next weekend for Tyranny of Dragons. Um, because uh, we kind of ended off in the middle of a big old fight. <laughs> So we're going to continue that big old fight and see what happens. Uh, Spoiler alert, the party isn't doing so hot. (laughs) That fight we were totally winning. You know, where I think you've barely touched the dragon. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And he's currently uh, under the water. (laughs) Popping out like once a minute to breath attack all of us. Yeah. (laughs) Hit and run tactics, bitches. Um, So... Join us uh, next Saturday for that, and then... Uh... Uh, I have an idea for that one. I'm going to have to tell Sherman. <laughs> um, so we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye! Bye! Bye! Bye.